closely with the Republic of Benin to ensure the success of this set of border formalities. Nigeria and the Republic of Benin partner to foster free movement of persons, goods, and services. Minister of Finance assures of a strong framework to sustain the economic recovery and growth plan. If all Muslims do what Islam says they should do, according to the Quran, according to the Sunnah, there won't be any problem. Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar, tasks Nigerians on the need for peaceful coexistence. And Kaduna state government varies curfew in parts of Kaduna metropolis. Hello and thank you for joining us on NTA Network News with me, Muhammad Kudu Abubakar in Abuja. Michael Olale is in Lagos and Susan Omale is in Makudi. The semi Karake joint border post along the international boundary between Nigeria and the Republic of Benin is now operational. At its inauguration and formal handover ceremony, President Muhammad Buhari described the ECOWAS flagship project as a symbol of integration and good example of regional public assets with tremendous spillover benefits. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports that President Buhari was joined at the event by his Beninois counterpart, Patria Talon. Situated on approximately 17 hectares of land, the same Krake border post lies on the Lagos Cotonou Lome Abidjan corridor, as well as part of the Trans African Highway Network, which accounts for about 70% of the entire transit traffic in the ECOWAS sub region. The strategically important project is aimed at achieving greater trade facilitation by combining border clearance activities in a single location. This will not only lead to economies of scale, benefits, but also enhance cooperation and coordination of controls of intelligence sharing as well as fraud and corruption. <laughs> Both President Muhammad Buhari and his Beninoa counterpart, Patrice Stallone, were full of gratitude to the ECOWAS and the European Union Commissions for their contributions and commitment to the success of the project. They say the border post, which is the busiest in the sub-region, recording on a daily basis huge movement of persons, goods and services, will go a long way in promoting brotherliness and mutual interest between Nigeria and the Republic of Benin. I would therefore like to reassure you that Nigeria is committed to the operationalization of the joint border post and will work closely with the Republic of Benin to ensure the success of this set of border formalities. The objective is to increase the competitiveness and efficiency of the main transport corridors in West Africa so as to boost international trade, which is a key factor of growth and contributor to poverty alleviation. No administration policy. President Buhari in particular is worried that the ECOWAS sub-region is suffering from inadequate transport infrastructure and inefficient services, which is one of the major bottlenecks to the attainment of socio-economic development and integration. Of course, it's a region where ports, roads, railways and airports still remain a constraint despite significant recent progress made. Nigeria has embarked on major investment programs covering these sectors to improve the competitiveness of our economies and accelerate growth. We are therefore delighted to welcome such initiatives aimed at boosting the economic integration of our member states in West Africa. ECOWAS and the European Union, which contributed to the execution of the semi cracky border post, are supporting similar projects at the border lines between Benin Republic and Niger, as well as Ghana and Togo. The objective is to build nine joint border posts in the region. So what is good for ECOWAS, what is good 
for Nigeria and what is good for Benin too is also good for the European Union. A joint committee with membership from Nigeria and Benin Republic has already been constituted to effectively coordinate and manage the joint border post within the guiding principles of ECOWAS. President Muhammad Buhari has since returned to Abuja. In Abuja, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibayu, has again stated the Buhari administration's commitment to improve the growth and uh, to grow the economy and by empowering the downtrodden in the society. This was at the launching of the Trader Money Scheme in Bauchi. Bauchi was the next stop for the nationwide micro, small and medium enterprise clinic, an empowerment initiative of the federal government aimed at enhancing the capacity of micro, small and medium enterprise in the country. Vice President Professor Yami Oshibajo acknowledged the entrepreneurial skills of Bauchi people and explained that the Traders' Money Scheme, initiative by the federal government, is aimed at tackling the challenges faced by macro, small and medium enterprise through interest-free loans to entrepreneurs. The federal government, led by President Muhammad Buhari, our sole aim is to make sure that all of you young men and women are occupied in your business or you are employed one way or the other. Our focus from the beginning of our administration is that there must be enough jobs, enough resources for young men and women to be able to do their work and to contribute their quota to Nigeria. Governor Mohammed Abdullahi Abubakar of Bauchi State thanked the federal government for its efforts to drive entrepreneurship in the country by making funds available to small entrepreneurs to scale up the quality of their products. The micro, small and medium enterprises clinic will no doubt provide a great opportunity for our entrepreneurs in the state. Hence, they are eager to key into this project with a view to getting the benefit attached to it. The beneficiaries who express gratitude for the initiative presented a check of 4.2 million naira as a refund of the loans they received from the federal government. Vice President received the check and disclosed that the money will be invested back into the different schemes in Bauchi State. Ruth Aguele, NTA News. The Senate has passed the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2018. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nko reports that the bill has been denied assent by President Muhammad Buhari thrice for reasons of irregularities and draft issues. Can, we can now take this issue. This is the first time the Electoral Act Amendment Bill will be presented on the floor of the 8th Senate. President Muhammad Buhari had withheld assent to the third bill while the National Assembly were still on recess. But the Joint Committee on INEC cut short their recess and reconsidered the bill by correcting the observations of Mr. President. The amendment bill is to provide for the use of card readers and any other similar devices in elections, to provide timeline for the submission of list of candidates, limit of election expenses of 5 billion naira for presidential candidates, 1 billion for governorship, 250 million for Senate and 100 million for members of House of Representatives. C clause 14 amends section 49.4 of the principal act that deals with failure of card reader. Where a smart card reader deployed for accreditation of voters failed to function in any polling unit and a fresh card reader is not deployed three hours before the close of the election in that unit, then the election shall not hold but be rescheduled and conducted within 24 hours thereafter. Both parties, both the APC and the PDP, I'm sure were interested in a very transparent election. And I'm sure with this now, Mr. President would of course give us his assent and we can now finally have an electoral uh, act that we'll all be proud of. I thank you all for all your efforts. The Senate also passed the bill for an act to establish School of Mines and Geological Studies which the House of Representatives had passed. The School of Mines and Geological Studies in Akoko Edo, local government area of Edo State, 
to serve as a training ground for would-be geologists and drug miners and thereby enhance the diversification of the Nigerian economy. The Federal Polytechnic Orozo Abuja Establishment Bill was passed through first reading. The bill is sponsored by Senator Philip Aduda, representing the Federal Capital Territory. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. The presidency has restated that Nigeria under President Muhammad Buhari is strong enough to defend its territory against any threat, assuring all Nigerians that there is no reason to worry about the hollow outburst by Nnamdi Kanu, the disputed leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOD. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity, Garbo Shehu, stressed that the Buhari administration is in constant touch with other friendly nations and has the best assurances that they will continue to reciprocate the respect Nigeria has for the sovereignty of their nations. The reenactment of Namdi Kanu's threats, according to the statement, is a mere distraction that will not be allowed to detract from the existing cordial relations between Nigeria and other countries. In the meantime, the House of Representatives has resolved to, as a matter of urgent public importance, establish an ad hoc committee to investigate the crisis that led to the suspension of the Executive Secretary of the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, Professor Usman Yusuf, by the Governing Board of the NHIS. National Assembly Correspondent Laimi Ali has the report. In the matter at Tuesday's plenary, Representative Diri Dowe decried the allegations leveled against the Executive Secretary of NHIS, Professor Usman Yusuf, and called for investigations into the matter. This very critical sector on which the hope of our universal health delivery is hinged. Representative Edward Pojok, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria, drew the attention of the House to legal provisions. Section 11 sub 2, it says that anyone who has the power to appoint someone also has the power to either remove or suspend you know, the person. So the purpose of that is that if the governing council does not have the power to appoint executive new secretary, the question is, do they not have the power to suspend him? The Anhok Committee has four weeks to investigate the issue and report back to the House. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. The federal government is again reassuring Nigerians that the 2019 general elections will not affect its commitment to deliver on the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, ERGP. Minister of Finance Zainal Ahmed well, stated this while speaking as a panelist on sustainable economic opportunities at the 2018 Nigeria Economic Summit, affirmed that government is aware of the sense of urgency in the implementation of policies to grow the economy. Lea Katum Babatunde has the report. 16. The World Bank pointed out that Nigeria needs an estimated 40 million jobs to cater for new market entrants by the year 2030. 12 years to the target, the Nigerian Economic Summit is availing public and private sector players the opportunity to discuss sustainable economic opportunities with a growing number of entrants into the job market. Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed at a plenary session said government through the ERGP will harness the potentials of the large population of Nigerian youths and their entrepreneurial passion. The president has asked some of us to just keep our eye on the ball, to focus on delivering on the ERG and delivering on the goals and titles that are set. There were concerns over the sustainers of the ERGP beyond 2019 and the next phase of government's plans for the socio-economic development of the nation. I think it's important that the elections must enable us to have a discussion around so what next. If you've got power and electricity, whether it's grid power or off-grid power, um, and distributed power to more cities and certainly more rural communities in this country, you would have a revolution. The minister insists that government will implement more inclusive growth models through its social investment programs that presently covers 9.2 million people, including 8.7 million children being fed under the school feeding program. In Abuja, I'm Leah Katimbaba Tunde, NTA News.
The federal government says it is committed to creating the enabling environment for human capital development. For details on business news, here is Amina Nujain. Hello and welcome to Business News. Nigeria's Finance Minister Zainab Ahmed says government has taken responsibility in addressing the thorny issue of unemployment in the country. Speaking on the sidelines of the Nigeria Economic Summit, the minister said accepting this challenge is a first step in finding a lasting solution. We have to move towards more enhancing people's livelihoods so that people can engage in productive activities to take care of themselves. We should de-emphasize trying to employ people because government cannot employ any more people. The private sector also has a limit of the number of people that they can employ. So we should uh, uh, encourage our youth especially to become entrepreneurs so that they can run their own businesses and also employ others. We clearly know that investing in education and health is an economic investment. It's not just a social investment because when you have people that are healthy and they have good schooling, then they, they end up being uh, productive citizens and add to the growth of the economy. In other news, Monday saw the market capitalization return to 12 trillion naira mark amid improved third quarter results. Market analysts attribute the sustained growth to bargain hunting in the midst of improved third quarter results released by some companies. Meanwhile, the OSHA index appreciated marginally by 0.69% to close at 33,191.45 basis point, while market capitalization stood at 12.117 trillion naira. Financial institutions dominated the most active stocks. This was led by Versity Monument Bank, Transco and Guarantee Trust Bank. That wraps up business news. I am Amina Nujemi. We'll take a short break and be right back. Hello, Niger. It's a beautiful day. And now it's time for some amazing music. Don't go anywhere because we'll be right back. Who is it? What are you searching for? With Glow Yakata, for every recharge, they'll give you 22 times the amount to call all the networks. What? So if I load 100 Naira, they will give me 2,200 Naira? Exactly! And that's not all. They're also giving up 6 gigabytes of data every month for 6 whole months. Wow! That's incredible! Yes! Are you sure? 22 times on every recharge? Yup. Found it! Found it! What is it? Yes! Get up to 6 gigabytes of data every month for 6 months and 2,200 Naira bonus for every 100 Naira recharge. The call all network square talkers and browsers live. The largest data network, GLOW, grandmasters of data. Kende suffers from indigestion. His twin Taiyi suffers from heartburn. Sometimes it's the other way around or both. That's why they use Gaviscon Double Action. It soothes within 3 minutes and lasts for up to 4 hours. For double relief from heartburn and indigestion, Gaviscon Double Action. Hey kids, the holidays are over, but the excitement is still on. Draw what you did in your holidays, and you stand a chance to win your dream holiday. Follow three simple steps to enter. Step one, draw your holiday experience. Step two, snap a picture. Step three, send picture. Name and address to the WhatsApp number 0902-588-8888. Hurry, go grab your interview packs now. Offer valid till stocks last. Terms and conditions apply. Interview noodles, tasty nutrition, good for you.
Enjoy free 250 MB every week just by recharging on Airtel Recharge Plus. Dial star 479 hash to know more. Airtel, the smartphone network. So clean, the detergent brand trusted by millions of Nigerians. For decades, its 30% concentrated formula has been trusted to wash faster, brighter, cleaner. So clean with stain magnet technology. The advanced enzyme formula pulls trap dirt out of fiber like a magnet. So clean with stain magnet technology for even better stain removal. Can't wake me for that. As my matter be, it, it be like you say, person die, person God he can't wake up. Now so really can't wake me from that. But I not get something when they go give you unless thank you. I did they change to make farm. Then he helped me house. The house when I did before, he did link before before I born five fifteen. You know, I don't get food when I go give them. That's why I share them. But now, my picky, they near me. Someday with me now. You know, be like before. So I happy. I thank you very eh? I know see her, but God, you go carry my, uh, I do a kilometer. Where are you there? Thank you for remaining with NTA Network News. The House of Representatives has approved the implementation of the external capital sourcing of $2.786 billion and $82.50 million, respectively, from the international capital market. National Assembly correspondent Laimi Ali reports that the approval is based on the recommendations of the House of Representatives Committee on AIDS, Loans and Debt Management. The approved amounts would enable government refinance balance of matured eurobond and service approvals in the 2018 Appropriation Act. The lawmakers, however, advised the federal government to find a way of reducing and limiting its request for more external borrowing and source revenue internally. Tuesday's plenary saw the passage of bills at second reading, which include a bill for an act to establish Federal University of Education, Kano, and another to establish Federal College of Education, Miso. A bill for an act to establish Federal College of Education, Technical, Aku, sponsored by Adisha Gunabdul Majid, passed second reading and was referred to Committee on Tertiary Education and Services. While deliberating matters of urgent public importance, the House, based on Representative Yakubu Berde's submissions on the recent security breach in parts of Kaduna State, advised Nigerians to bury the hatchet and embrace peace. We also call on the Nigerian police to carry out thorough investigation in order to fish out the perpetrators of this crisis and bring them to book. Not just enough to say the soldiers should do this, federal government should do that. The problem we have majorly is with the masses themselves. Instead of the masses, Mr. Speaker, to gank up and kick against misrule and kick against people that don't govern well and kick against people that mishandling them and kick against people that don't keep their promise to the masses. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, these masses on a daily basis, on the slightest provocation, begin to kill themselves. The first article of our constitution says every Nigeria is guaranteed right to life. Our education is the key to success. It is the key to economic development and it is also the key to solving the insecurity problems that we have in this country. The lawmakers, following a motion by Representative Samuel Ifangi, urged relevant agencies to conduct environmental assessments in Abia State in order to prevent pipeline explosion in communities, considering the devastating consequences. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News.
The 48th Auditor General's Conference has opened with a mandate on all three levels of government to strictly ensure implementation of audit reports to ensure transparency and accountability in governance. Auditor General of the Federation, Anthony Ayine, stated these at the opening of the conference in Abuja. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed reports. States and Office of the Auditor General of the Federation are to deliberate on value addition in the field of auditing in the digital age, where their professional advice and reports are not kept in the cupboard but complied with for national interests. To the participants at the conference, independence of auditors in discharging their duty is essential for financial prudence by all tiers of government at the three levels of governance. We are examining and see what value addition as auditors general are we making to the system? That has been our job, to ensure accountability and probity. For instance, you have a budget. We want to see you implementing the budget. If you overspend, we will now draw your attention that, look, this is what has been approved for you to spend. You cannot spend more than that. Uh, ensuring that there is no waste, there is accountability, there is uh, transparency in government business. The conference will determine the role of supreme audit institutions in value creation will produce a blueprint on the new role of auditors in nation building. Ahmed Anders Ahmed, NT News. Media practitioners have expressed total support for the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, as it strives to make Nigeria a force to reckon with in the world of communications. The media practitioners' consensus was at the opening of the 2018 Africa's Investment Platform for Broadcast Content and Technology, Africast, in Abuja. Adebola Brookson Sunday reports. For about 23 years now, media practitioners have always converged on Nigeria for their showbiz. Wonderful program. This year, about 700 delegates from across the globe are in Abuja to discuss on the dynamics of broadcasting in the digital era. And what the NBC is doing. Information practitioners say the event is an opportunity for them to network, exchange ideas where Africa's point of view is given full expression. We in the Nigerian Television Authority are proud to have been associated with this initiative right from inception to date. We will continue to support the NBC and other stakeholders in this venture because, among other things, it reinforces Nigeria's position as a giant in Africa. The efforts of the present administration to fully transit from analog to digital broadcasting was commended. Just last week, the National Assembly passed second reading of the bill to amend the existing act to accommodate the DSO in the Nigeria law. The success of this event is a success for Nigeria march into digital era in broadcasting. We may wonder what the benefits are, but I can assure you all that the social, political, and economic arena of Nigeria will never be the same again. Nigeria will experience growth employment and prosperity. Pilot project we are working on to launch very soon push VOD video on demand platforms in Abuja and Kaduna as part of efforts to enhance and enrich the viewing experiences associated with digital broadcasting. It was an opportunity for equipment manufacturers, content provider and signal distributors to showcase their products. There's a lot of initiatives, there's private initiatives, government initiatives to adopt new standards, to move to digitization, to free up old frequency bands, so I think definitely there's a lot going on. Our format of transmissions is DVB-T2. The quality, the format of the you know um, studio outputs will be MPEG-4. So the quality is retained and will continue with our quality. The biennial event is the twelfth in the series. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The twenty-four hour curfew imposed in on Kaduna metropolis and environs has been relaxed to enable residents restock for essential needs. Muhammad Omar Ajingi has this update from Kaduna. 
The review of the 24-hour curfew imposed on Kaduna and Enveros followed Security Council meeting, which resolved to allow movement and opening of business premises between 1 o'clock in the afternoon and 5 o'clock in the evening. The Nebu residents restocked their essential needs, after which the 24-hour curfew resumes fully. The State Security Council emphasized that, due to security threat in some parts of the metropolis, the 24-hour curfew remains fully and will be vigorously enforced by security operatives in places such as Kabbalah West, Kabbalah Ndoki, Saban Tesha, Narai, and Marabaridu, all within the metropolis. The Security Council regrets the inconvenience to residents, but the obligation to secure lives and property necessitates an uncompromising approach. Government will continue to monitor the situation and make further announcements based on the guidance of the security agencies. Similarly, a recommendation of the Security Council, the 24-hour coffee imposed on Kaso Magani and Kujama towns of Kajuru local government area since last Friday has been reviewed to docks to dawn. In Kaduna, I'm Muhammad Umarajingi, NTN News. Just like Siamese trains, stable democracy largely determines the strength of a country's national security. Fostering this synergy for enhanced growth and development is what brought key players and policy makers together for a national dialogue. Defense correspondent Olajide Bello reports. From the Sultan of Sokoto to the National Security Advisor and the President, Alumni Association of the National Institute, constant dialogue addressing educational gaps as well as implementation and adoption of strategic policies and recommendations were some of the topical issues yearning for urgent attention. What happened to the outcomes of all these talk shops? Who is coordinating the outcome, the resolution that were arrived at at the highest level for them to implement? Because our problems in this country is not lack of solutions to our problems, but lack of implementation. There is therefore no better form of measurement and aspiration to democracy than achieving peace and stability through the employment of all the necessary tools to achieve national security. This one day conference is therefore being organized because I need have a strong feeling of optimism that these threats can be reduced to the level that can be considered healthy. The National Dialogue is designed to provide a template to further strengthen the nation's security architecture from the Nigerian Army Resource Center in Abuja, Olajide, Bello, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Muhammadu Buhari Oshibajo Dynamic Support Group says its membership drive to deliver 40 million votes for President Muhammad Buhari in 2019 general elections is yielding positive results. The group reaffirmed this at a forum with its national patrons and members in Abuja. Salihu Abdullahi reports. The political support group is among many others working towards actualizing the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari through grassroots mobilization. The group says Achievement of the Buhari administration are veritable tool in marketing the administration's vision and quest to retain power beyond 2019. The masses across the board believe in its ability to hold the public trust without letting them down and its action since assumption has been tailored towards upholding the people's mandate with utmost integrity. The group has membership across the country working to realize the vision win 40 million votes for President Muhammad Buhari in 2019. Similarly, the Buhari Osibaju Strategic Solidarity Movement is committing itself to the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Yemi Osibaju. The group plans to carry out this task through sensitization and enlightenment of Nigerians on President Muhammad Buhari's vision an achievement so far. We will not engage in the divisive hate speeches and campaign or calumny, as will be mobilization and issue-based awareness campaign. BOSSM 
is ready to mobilize the masses. The vote for President Buhari is a vote for our future generation and our children yet unborn. The Buhari Osibaju Strategic Solidarity Movement has similar mission with other support groups for the president and his vice to actualize continuity in governance under their leadership, that is building institutions and infrastructure that will help take Nigeria to greater height and better future in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Ogun State Governor Senator Ibukule Amosun has restated his relationship with President Muhammad Buhari remains strong and impeachable, in spite of the desperation of the political opponents to orchestrate disaffection between them through what he described as mendacious propaganda. A statement signed by Governor Amosu himself vehemently denied the allegations against President Muhammad Buhari, which were attributed to his person describing them as lies from the pit of hell. According to Governor Amosu, the ultimate aim of the purveyors of unconscionable falsehoods is to drive a wedge between him and the pre President Buhari and tarnish the he, Governor Amosu's heart and reputation. Governor Amosu emphasized that the relationship between President Buhari and himself transcends partisan politics noting that he holds President Buhari in the highest esteem, and nothing will change that. President Muhammad Buhari has congratulated the Emir of Zuru, Alhaji Muhammad Sani Sami, on his 75th birthday celebration. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino, says President Buhari joins the Zuru Emirate Council, the government and people of Kebi State, Emir of Zuru's family and friends in celebrating the landmark age of the royal father who has spent all his working life in leadership positions that involved protecting the interests of the people and the country since he was enlisted into the Nigerian army in 1962. The statement asks that President Buhari salutes the Emir of Zuru's wisdom in introducing an inter-religious committee in Zuru Emirate as well as a health foundation on HIV and AIDS committee which has created peaceful coexistence and harmony in his domain. President Buhari prays that Almighty God grants Alhaji Muhammad Sani Sami longer life and good health to continue serving humanity. Time now to join Michael in Lagos for more on NTA Network News. Hello Michael, over to you. Thank you, Kudu, and welcome to Lagos. The ongoing staff verification of former Nigerian airways have continued to experience hiccups. While there are improvements in access in the verification firm, the retirees still have to wait for days to be cleared in the anti graft agencies before being attended to. Paulo Mukago has latest on the exercise. These retirees have been screened and are now waiting for final clearance and capturing by the anti-graft agency. Unlike last week when the entire process was characterized with different challenges, the situation has improved remarkably. Union members and the Presidential Initiative on Continuous Audit, PICA, attended promptly to the retirees. However, the delay now is at the final lap of a process that has to do with documentation, screening, clearance, and data capturing. All other areas are okay. Our problem now is AFCC. Majority of the staff here have been cleared since Thursday, waiting for AFCC clearance. I don't know, they are not doing anything because they are not delaying everybody here. Since Monday, I've been coming here. Today, I flew in from London today. This morning, so my name is supposed to be on the 17th, but up to date, they haven't come to 17. Those thinking that it's a phone problem, it's not the phone. As we are here now, you can see to go in become a problem, even to see the EFCC. I got my form since uh, day, day three. Since then, we have been coming, writing names down, writing names down. Some of us, we will left here at 8 o'clock in the night. What we have now is the pick up people in charge of the payment. I uh, reduce the service, service years of our staffs. If you work 22 years, they will give you 11 years. I work 19 years, they give me five, uh, give me 14 years. Why are they cutting the five the years for? What are they? Are they supposed to cut the years for us? In Lagos, Paul Omukago, NTN News.
The Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, is creating better financial inclusion for MSMEs by promoting debt capital and movable collateral for access to loans. This is why the corporation brought together operators in the microfinance bank subsector to deliberate on how the policy can be further strengthened. Abola de Salami was at the sensitization workshop and now reports. Capital refers to any property which is informally held and is not recognized. It may be used or unused, such as cars, laptops, or jewelries. Unlike equity collaterals like land or buildings, which most MSMEs do not possess. These properties can be used as collaterals with any microfinance bank in the country following the February 2015 issuance and gazetting of securities interest in movable collaterals. Towards accomplishing this, the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, brought together lenders and microfinance bank operators on the gains of embracing the policy in order to stimulate economic growth and reduce poverty index. We are trying to reset, so to say, how we can tweak the thinking of the lenders, especially the microfinance banks and other big lenders that, look, don't close your minds to the other collaterals, movable collaterals, since there are many and enough quantity so that you can take that as a fallback position to give loans, to increase the number of loans to the market women, to the small-scale businesses. Speakers in their paper presentation emphasized that as at September 2018, movable collaterals have increased the volume of microcredit to 689.4 billion naira. You are probably like to have two or three cars in the house. You have a child who has just graduated and has been at home for three, four, five years without a job. What are the cars doing? These are dead assets. They are not serving you. The forum also resolved to holistically review lending policies in the financial sector in order to allow for financial inclusion for macro, small and medium enterprises. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. You are still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. Please stay with us. Air conditioned office with the itchy throat. Strap cells. Go to the spotlight with the raspy throat. Strap soles. You in the pollution. It's you. Dry throat. Strap soles. Hello in the downpour with the scratchy throat. Take strap soles. Strap soles, with its soothing medicinal ingredients, will heal the harm done to your throat from external factors. Strap soles. Strap soles. Strap soles for a dry, itchy, raspy, scratchy throat. Can your milk do this? Can your milk do this? Mine can. With Hollandia evaporated milk, your ice cream, custards, and variations of beverages taste pleasantly different. Hollandia evaporated milk. Life tastes different. From the house of cheese. Fake news which is shared for malicious purposes is a danger to our peace and security in Nigeria. Misinformation as fake news is a serious threat to our hard-earned democracy and promotes hatred and misunderstanding between our communities. We are all responsible for stopping the spread of fake news in its tracks. So, always check the source and credibility of any news item. Say no to fake news. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. <laughs> Thank you for remaining with NTA Network News. The crusade to grow Nigeria repositioned the economy from reliance on oil and diversify into other critical sectors has beamed light on the tourism sector with the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, flagging off the Rediscover Heritage Bikers tour to 11 states across the country. Mufa Shaji reports that the bikers are scheduled to visit 100 historical sites across Nigeria. The energies, the adrenaline rush by the Rediscover Heritage Bikers as a call to awaken the curiosity of Nigerians to explore the wonders of Nigeria's natural beauty through a tour that would see these riders crisscross a third of the country. It is part of a project 
aimed at attracting foreign and direct tourism investments critical to Nigeria's economic development. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, describes it as a green shoot of economic recovery. In line with our ambition to make tourism a veritable income earner for this nation. I hope you all enjoy the tour and go back to your individual countries with good memories and good testimonies. Tourism is one of our missions. Our other mission is to promote peace, love, and harmony. So we appeal to all and sundry to join hands with us to use this project in making Nigeria one of the most important tourism destinations in the world. This display of Nigeria's rich cultural heritage sets up the bypass for a smooth ride across the designated states. The bikers have two weeks to visit the selected national and world heritage, cultural asset sites, museums and monuments in Abuja, Ufanshaj, and News. The 31st National Council for Arts and Culture Festival, NAFEST, has opened in River State amidst pomp and pageantry. Naja Atatijani reports that the theme of the 2018 display is our festival, our heritage. The opening ceremony had all the big names in entertainment, airing Rivers born Duncan Mighty in what is known as the biggest cultural display in West Africa. Governor of the state, Nyeso Mwike, and Director General of the National Council for Arts and Culture, Otumba Olushegun Ronshewe, reminded Nigerians of the cultural values which unite the nation and cautioned against discord. The National Festival of Arts and Culture is held annually on a state-to-state -state rotation. Bielsa State won the 2017 edition, and this year's event promises to be well-packaged to meet international standards. That's it, Jani, NTA News. Time to join Susan in Makudi for more reports. Thank you, Kudu, and welcome to Makudi. Governor Samuel Otom has urged those who choose to serve in the military to see their service as to God and humanity and must be ready at all times to contribute their quota to solving the security challenges confronting the country. Governor Otom stated this while receiving the newly commissioned officers of Course 65, graduates of the Nigerian Academy, Kaduna, who are Benue State indigenous. Correspondent Bem Hanya reports that one of the commissioned officers is Second Lieutenant Dating Bichia, who discovered the crash site of the Nigerian Air Force plane in 2006. Officers were in the states to identify with the governor and appreciate him for the assistance the state government has rendered to them over the years. Governor Otum commended them for their decision to join the military and strive to defend the territorial integrity of Nigeria, which he described as a great sacrifice. The governor urged the ambassadors of Benue State and render selfless service. We know the challenge that we have today in Nigeria of security. The young men and uh, we believe that God will definitely guide and help you to excel in this assignment. We said that charity begins at home to identify ourselves with you. Among the officers who met the governor was Second Lieutenant Detimbi Chia, the young man who discovered the crashed Nigerian Air Force plane in Kandi Hills, Kandy, in 2006. In Makudi, Bem Hanya, NTA News. The Independent National Commission, the Independent National Electoral Commission has assured Nigerians that all votes will count in 2019 general election as it has devised sophisticated strategies to ward off all kinds of malpractices, including vote buying. 
Resident Electoral Commissioner INEC, Benue State, Dr. Nentawe Yuwada, stated this when he led members of staff of the commission to some com communities in Makudi, advised them on the need to collect their permanent voter cards on time. Charles Abba reports that the 6th to the 12th of November 2018 has been slated for collection of PVCs. So far, 2.5 million hopeful voters have been registered by INEC in Benue State with over 400,000 PVCs lying uncollected. This development has led to the campaign by INEC to create awareness on the importance of people to collect their PVCs, especially in Makudi local government area, which has the highest figure of 90,000 unclaimed cards. The campaign train the palace of the Te Makudi, Chief Benga, where the resident electoral commissioner, Dr. Nintawe Yirwada, intimated the traditional council on the negative impact of the uncollected voter cards on the election process. In the last election in Benue State, um, about 1.9 million people went into election, but only 600,000 people voted. That was far cry from the number of people who are registered in Benue State. The Te Makudi, who lamented the situation, assured the commission of the traditional ruler's support to step up the collection to ensure a credible general election. I want to thank the INEC and pledge our loyalty and support. The REC maintained that the forthcoming elections would be unprecedented as all loopholes for rigging, ballot box snatching, and vote buying, which were experienced in the past elections, have been blocked. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. It's now time for us to take another break. NTA Tuesday Live this week focuses on the Independent National Electoral Commission budgeting for the 2019 election. What are the matters arising? NTA Tuesday Live promises to be incisive and educative. Don't miss it. Brought us as usual. As usual. Mm. You have no problem. Three, 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 three. You are welcome, sir. <laughs> as usual, yeah. I was... <laughs> you take that one. Yeah, yeah. That, that one. You take that one. Yeah. 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 We don't understand. We want Nigeria homegrown rights. Finish. You don't have. You don't have. Join the rice revolution today. No other rice that tastes like Nigerian rice. Are you sorry? Look, we got the Nigerian rice we are talking about. Chocolate made in Nigerian rice. Healthy food. I'm going to bring Mrs. Mobu to come to chocolate rice of made in Nigeria here. Yeah. Yeah, right. And see yeah. how it are made. Correct, correct. And how they are cooked. Correct. <laughs> Homegrown rice are good for your health. It are boost our economy and I give employment to our people. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Thank you for remaining with NTA Network News. Rangers and the Kano Peelers are set for the 2018 Itaio Cup final midweek in Asaba. And the 2018 Nigerian Communications Commission NCC Tennis League continues. Kene Ema Agbodike has more on Sports Update. Eight-time African champions, Nigeria Super Falcons, will play the Bayana Bayana of South Africa on the 